So welcome everybody. Welcome to Hot Song Podcast. Um, today is September the 5th, 2024. And the topic for this evening is So Energy Revisited. So I think um, probably in June, around June and July timeframe, I there there were a couple of episodes that I talked about um, like So Energy. So it's been you know, well, I, I kind of left it for two two months. So I think it's time to revisit it again. Why? Because it's really important for us to um work from our heart now. It's, the energy is, is in such a way that I think so energy actually would um benefit everybody. So that's why I want to revisit this. I'm not sure whether you all remember um, what the, the, the so how to use the so energy to do um, clearing for yourself. So I think it's time to kind of revisit it, to refamiliarize everybody um, with this tool. And if you like it, then please feel free to use it. So. Um, let me kind of get my notes out so we know what I'm talking about first. Okay, so energy. Um, why so energy? I think the first thing is why so energy? So um, there are, so, so energy really is the using energy from your heart that is connected to your soul. And the other kind of energy is really um, more of the, the mind energy. So even for third eye, third eye is, you know, is usually around here within the, between our brows. However, it is still rather connected to our mind. So within the, the third eye, a lot of times you are being influenced. If you if you try to get information through your third eye, so the information you get would be um, influenced by your mind, meaning that whatever programs it is that you have been um, playing with, then it is going to filter the information that you receive in. So it is kind of a um, bit of bit more biased and, and more ego oriented. Whereas the soul energy is really from, from the heart and also from zero point. Um, let's talk about what zero point, what, what do I mean by zero point a little later um, as I revisit all of this with you all. So the zero point and the real eye. So we have actually many eyes. So there is the um, our real eyes, the, the two eyes that we have, that we actually see matter that is really geared towards seeing matter, meaning that things that you can touch, things that you can um, smell, so those are more of the matter. So that is through our physical eyes. And then there is a um, third eye, which is you don't actually see that there is an eye, not, not the eye like the our, our actual physical eyes, but there is a third eye, which is um, the, the name of eye, because as an eye, it actually, receives information from outside and it um, goes through our mind and being um, and it's an input. So the, the third eye is an input, but the input is more from um, non-physical information, meaning that in what you pick up from your third eye are usually things that you may not be able to see with your physical eyes. So in this sense, the eye is just um, a, it's kind of just a, um, it's, it's, not a, it's not a real eye, but it's an eye 
in terms of receiving a some a portal that you receive information. So and another one, another eye, which is important for soul energy is the real eye. So where is the real eye? The real eye is um, if you touch your nose, it's the lowest point of, of, of your of your nose. You know? That is usually where the, the real eye is. And to be more exact, I'm gonna share um, share screen and let's see. <clears throat> Give you so the location of the real eye. So where it is, the eye itself or the the, the center that actually receives the information from out from um from the soul and also from um, outside of ourselves is located in the intersection of um, the hairline. So hairline, so usually around here, wherever it is that your hair starts, that's where the hairline is, intersection of that and the your temple. So so both sides, the left and the right temple. If you just, um, okay, if I stop this. So, so then it is really the hairline. So this, so this is my hairline right here. So if you kind of plop a, um, an in, kind of um, invisible line, just straight down. And then if you, kind of um, go through where your, well, my temples are here. So it is the cross section there. At some point, the in between my temple, if you draw, if you kind of imagine a plane, and then there is this, and you drop this line inward, inside your head from the, the hairline, then there is a point that those two intersect. That is where the real eye um, really resides. And it is, um, and it's usually the location, the outside location is the lowest point within like, like your, your nose. So nose, so that is, if you just imagine in, it's inside the body. So that's where the real eye is, okay? So physically, that is where the real eye is. And this real eye, um, it is situated in a location that can be fed from our um, central meridian. So central meridian is, um, you know, the top of your head, the top of your head. There is this, if you just imagine the top of your head all within your body, there is a prana tube. That's the tube of energy. That is the central meridian. So from the central meridian, it feeds energy into the, the real eye. <laughs> and within the central meridian, there is a point that's the zero point. So lo location wise, it's, it is if you if you find your ribs, if you so okay, so let me see if I can move it around. So <clears throat> the um, zero point is so if I if I touch my body and find the ribs, so when wherever it is that the two two sides of my ribs connect in the middle. There is a um, breast plate. So there is a, um, a bone in the middle that kind of connects the, my ribs from both left and right. So it, it is really there where, where those two ribs meet in the middle, just right around there. And it is um, inside the body that is where 
the um, and it's about two about two fingers width, and um, so it's not right at where it, it, the the breast bone starts. It is about two fingers width, a little bit above. That's where the, the location of the zero point is. So the zero point is really where um, our soul resides, or, or I should say there's a connection there that can connect to our soul. So our soul is actually very big. It's all around our body. However, it um, it's connected with the body through this zero point. Then, well, this is one of the, the, the points within the body that is connected to the, the soul that is around us. So that is called the zero point. So when we start to activate a zero point and we do breathing to, to also connect with the central meridian, and when all of that is connected, the central meridian kind of gets the energy information from the, the, the soul. And it comes up to feed the, um, the, the information that we get from our soul feeds into our real eye. So through the real eye, that's where we can start to work with our soul energy. So, so far, so good. Any questions? Comments so far? No, it's all familiar. Okay, wonderful. Yes. Thank you. Do you have a picture that shows where zero point is? And the um, real eye is on the body? Um, I have. I just showed you the, the the one about the real eye. Um, the I I didn't I didn't include it this time. However, okay. yeah, it is it is. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I, I I know you showed it, but when um when we touch it, so we really. Mm -hmm. So we really have to think that it's inside, not on the surface. It's not on the surface. It's it's within. Okay. Okay. Let's see. What else do I do? I want to. Okay. So when we um, so you know where the the real eye is. Now that we know where the real eye is, so. What we can do is actually just activate the real eye now. So just kind of touch this, the lowest point within your, your nose. You kind of touch this just to activate it. That's usually how I, I would um, kind of, yeah. Even though the real eye itself is within, however, this is where the, um, the energy um, can interact with things that are outside of us. So that's where, when I touch this, I kind of, it's one of the way to activate it. So just to remind ourselves that the real eye is around this area and it's slightly within our skull. So touch that and massage that a little bit. And then just imagine breathing in to this, to the real eye. So breathe into the real eye. And just breathe out. And also, the other thing is to activate the zero point. So the zero point is around this, this area. So two fingers worth um, above the breastplate. So zero point activate. And the real eye activate. So just feel that connection between the zero point and the real eye. So for me, when I activate those two and um, and connect those two, 
I can actually feel that there is, I could feel a bit of um, pressure around my real eye area and also a bit of pressure through the top of my head as well. So all of you know how to do that to activate real eye and the zero point. Okay. Thank you. Then the next one is, um, I talked about an orb. So the orb is, um, when you work with the soul energy within the zero point, there is actually so how should I say it? Within the zero point, once you've activated and you've worked with it for a while, the zero point actually um because it is here, so you can't really see it too well. So that's why we want to use the all is to really to send that energy up from the zero point to the, the real eye and actually ask the, the, the body to project an orb outside so we can actually see that orb. Okay. So that's what the orb is. And it's actually within our body around the, the zero point area, there is this energy ball. And when we start to work with the, the soul energy, we actually, um, when we activate the all, we actually ask the soul energy that is within the zero point to project a, an, an image so that we can start to work with it. Because when we um, project the image out, we can actually start to, to see the, the, the energy. And when we see it, it actually makes it easier for us to work with it. Now, not everybody can actually see it yet. Um, however, with practice, the more you practice, the more sensitive you become, you start to be able to see um, different colors within the all. Okay, so that's what the orb is. It's really a projected image of the, the, the soul energy that is within the zero point. And um, I remember the, the first time I saw it, it was um, the first time I saw it, I, I actually saw a, um, a brilliant white light. So the, the orb that I saw it was a brilliant white light. And I can actually see beams of, of white light shooting out of that orb. So it's not totally um, like white, whereas I can actually see that there are beams of light shooting out of that and it's spinning. So that is the, the orb that I, the first orb that I, first time I saw that. So um, that's, for me, that's what I saw. That does not mean that, you know, all of you are going to see that. Um, every, every person's orb is a little bit different. So you may see different colors and that's fine. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Sure, go ahead. Um, I remember that uh, you explained that um, that orb spinning counterclockwise, but I don't remember why it's counterclockwise, not clockwise. Um, it naturally spins counterclockwise. However, um, some so when you communicate with it, it will temporarily spin clockwise, just so that you can like it's just it's like a a confirmation. Why? Um, your your central meridian actually spins counterclockwise, and because of this is set by the, the uh, central meridian, so it is counterclockwise. So it's 
so I actually don't see that orb, but I, you know, imagine that orb. Should I imagine that it's spinning counterclockwise, right? Um, don't try to imagine it. Um, just, just know that it is there. And at some point when you, um, so when you become more sensitive, then you will start to see it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. The, the more you activate your, um, more, more often you, you work with the soul energy, the more of, um, the easier it is for you to be able to see it. So, and, and don't think of it as, you know, this, you're not actually seeing a ball. It's not like, don't, don't think that you're going to see something like that. Fact. It's a very, um, it's, it's subtle energy. So it's, so it's very subtle. Even if you, when you see it, it's actually very subtle. Very subtle. Um, you may, it may be easier for you to feel it. So for me, it's, um, I see it. It's the, the like, but it's very subtle. Meaning that the, for me, I can see it. It's the, it's very, um, it's almost like it's not there. There but when you when you see it, it's coming from your zero point and going up to your yeah uh, real eye, and it's staying here and rotating here. So what happens in the orb is the orb is the energy from zero point, and it goes up and it's kind of um, it's it's created outside of the, the real eye area. So it's around there. Okay. And um, is that for me, it's actually easier to, for me to, to feel it rather than to see it. I can see it, but the light, it's very faint. How you feel it, you feel warm? You, how you feel it? You feel that there is something there. Ah, oh, something. There's energy there. Got it. There's an energy there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Could, could you explain why it the central meridian and um, the uh, orb do counterclockwise? Um, I don't know why. You it don't just know why. Is. It just is. Because in the universe, if most things are clockwise. So I just wonder why, why is it that we're counterclockwise? What do you mean in the universe, most things are clockwise? I mean, um, I've heard that uh, creator uh, energies, the, uh, the earth rotates counterclockwise. Um, if you uh move clockwise your energy builds up if you do counterclockwise your energy goes down you know that sort of thing yeah i would i would take that with a grain of salt <laughs> okay i would definitely like don't believe anything anyone tells you not even me so okay. yes you have to you have to feel it for yourself okay and my next question is that I've heard that, um, especially, you know, when let's say somebody has passed and they come to you, or sometimes people see orbs of people that have passed. Okay. So I guess when we pass, we still carry our orb. Is that what it is? Um, our, our soul is is within that orb. Um, the body is just... Yeah, it's gone, right. Yeah, the, 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 the body is not us. The orb is us. Okay, gotcha. So, yeah, <laughs> I can totally understand why, you know, when, when people pass, you still see the orb. Yeah. 
that, that is who we are, is, is that orb. So the soul is the orb, okay. Yes, uh, we actually, the soul does not need a body. The soul can exist without the body. Right. Yeah. So you actually, when you feel the orb, you feel your soul. And if I don't, and, and you see your soul, right? Yeah. Interesting. Um, you don't see the totality of your soul, but you see a, um, a very small part of your soul because your soul, uh, your energy, the soul energy actually is much, much bigger. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. You are welcome. So then let's keep going then. So there is the orb. So we, when we activate the orb, that's what we are doing. We are actually working with the soul energy in a zero point to create a um, kind of an, an image that we can work with. So that's what the orb is. And the next idea I want to um, revisit is the whirlpool. So what is a whirlpool? The whirlpool is really our all, but it is spinning like a whirlpool. So when the, the orb is spinning like a whirlpool, it swim, it is, it's spinning, um, the orb can do a couple of things. It, you can ask the orb to create a whirlpool. So the whirlpool is really to assist you in releasing energy. So that's why um, we want to, to use the, the whirlpool as one of the, the ways that we can use our soul energy to do. Other things is we can ask the, 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 the orb to, or the soul energy to create a boat. So usually if you are trying to, um, assist somebody to pass over, then you would create a boat. So there, uh, our soul energy can do a couple of things. However, we're just, um, what I want to do is actually just concentrate on the world pool because my intention is to assist everybody to release all the, the energy that they, uh, uh, that no longer serve ourselves in this moment. So whirlpool is really the, the the way to do it is to ask the soul energy to create this whirlpool. And you can feel the whirlpool. So so what happens when you create the whirlpool, ask the soul energy to create this whirlpool is you actually just stand, just imagine yourself standing in the whirlpool. So the whirlpool from the, your feet up it will just assist you in releasing the energy. So that's how we can use the, the soul energy to do cleansing. Um, it does willful also rotate counterclockwise? Or... I believe so, yes. Okay. Okay. So that is the, um, so that, that's kind of very basic. And how to use the soul energy is to activate the real eye, activate the zero point, um, and activate the orb first, and then activate world pool. So we can start to use the soul energy to do release. And then the next point I want to talk about is, um, a little bit about the color, the color of your soul. So there are different colors. So usually green, there's, so the, the colors um, could be green, it could be red, um, and those color. Those are usually the colors that are, um, let's see, the colors that are, not as powerful. So what we actually want to do, and I'm going to grab it. Okay. So 
So green is really um, up to 300. Okay. And then on the scale, so we're talking about a scale of one to a thousand. Green color is really um, up to about 300. Red is three to 400. And then white is four to 500. So we want to at least get the your soul energy to um, white. So when you get to white and above, so above blue is a uh, it's it's from five hundred to six hundred, and then purple is um is six to seven, and then seven to eight hundred is yellow. And then we have light yellow, and then the um, 800 to 900 is more of a, a, um, a more solid yellow color. And then when we get to 900 to 1,000, it's a gold color. So when we are able to see our, our orb, then it we can just tell by the, the color of our orb. Um, what like what what is the the state of our soul okay and um i find that actually it's easier to to find out what is the the, the color of my orb um when I, well, now actually I've been practicing it for a while. I can actually see the color even um, even when I have my, whether I have eyes open or closed. However, at first I find it easier to kind of find out what is the color of my um, soul of the orb with my eyes closed. So you may want to try that to just activate everything and then see if um, you can see the orb and find out what the color of your orb is. It does not matter what color it is because um, it's just, if you if you see that it is green, that just means that you have to release more. Just do some release. If it's red, so do release until you at least see white. So why? white is if if you want to do any healing um other people then aim for white and above so at least white it's better if it is blue purple and yellow because the more the, the the stronger your soul power the 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 easier it is for you to use the soul power to um just work on other people as well However, if you're just working on yourself, just releasing on yourself, then it does not matter what color your soul is. You're just doing release. You're just doing release work. And I do find that um, really the when I first. Um, activate the, the zero point. It takes anywhere between 10 minutes to 15 minutes before I actually um, would be able to see blue or purple, those colors. At first, it's usually, for me anyways, it's usually more of a red color. So when I start to do more breathing and do some release, then I, I would start to see um, the higher colors but then that's just me you guys may be able to see yellow first time around so okay so this is this is just um, a review of what you um you know how to do how to tell the, the state of your soul, where it is at. Question for you. 
I remember vaguely that last time you were teaching it, you told us if you close your eyes and you see red, you know, that means your orb is red or I'm a little confused. So your soul energy is in the red. So. Right, but do you, when you close your eyes, do you actually see the orb in front of you, or? Um, so when you close, when you close your eyes. So when I close my eyes, I don't know what happens when you close your right. eyes. But right. when I close my eyes, that's that's my experience. Is I usually see you know dark color. Right. Once I fired up my soul energy, then I would actually see that there is a, um, you know, there's a patch within oh. the dark color that starts to, um, okay. that is a different color. So that one, the one in the middle is the soul color. Gotcha. Yeah, thank you for explaining. I guess I didn't understand it last time when you explained, yeah. And I do find that if I do a longer meditation, if I do more release, um, the 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 color uh, of the, let's say, in the middle, let's say it it's starts to be more purple color. Actually, when I start to do uh, a longer meditation, the rest would start to turn color as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, interesting, yeah. And can you do this meditation to heal the physical body? Um, you can ask your soul energy to do that. Okay. 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 So Thank now, you. You're most welcome. Thank you for your question. And then, so now I want to, um, so this is just re revisit, revisiting. So I've talked to you about these already. So, um, so I kind of already went through, you know, how to activate your soul energy, how to work with it. The next one, next point I want to, um, to kind of revisit with all of you is how can we enhance our soul energy? So doing release work, yes, we can definitely do release work. Um, release is uh, two things, release, not mine. So because a lot of the times we take on belief systems that are not ours. It could be, you know, our neighbors, our friends. So they're not ours. So, um, and a lot of times other people's beliefs is, does not resonate with our soul. Then it actually weighs on our soul and kind of um, push our, our frequency down. So then releasing not ours is important, releasing any karma. So karma, if you don't, if you don't specify, you say karma, release karma, activate, then you're just working on present life. So whatever it is that the, the life that you're living right now, from, you know, from when you're born all the way up to however old you are in the moment. So so you're releasing any karma that's built up from that. However, you can also specify that you want to release karma that is from um, previous lives. Especially the, um, the previous three lives really have the most impact on our experience in the cur current life. So the, the suggestion is to um, after you've released karma from present life is to go to do the first past life and the second past life and the third past life. So do the past three lives um, karma release to do that and and feel the difference as well. So feel, feel once you've done that, you can, you can actually feel lighter. That's that's one way of enhancing our soul energy is to just let go of whatever it is that's not yours, so not mine, release, and then karma, release. So those are usually the things that weigh our soul down. And the other thing is to actually um, 
to bring in more energy. So how do we bring in more energy? Is to actually um, activate other eyes. We have, you know, I've, I've mentioned we have third eye, we have the real eye. However, we actually have the fourth eye, the fifth eye, sixth eye, and the seventh eye. So the fourth eye is, um, okay, is your right hand, the palm of your, or PC8, which is a meridian point, which is, it corresponds to the palm of your right hand. So that is actually connected to the fourth eye. And then the fifth eye is the palm of your left hand. So the each of these eye does certain things. And to review the fourth eye, what the fourth eye does is um, it lets you change reality. Yes. So change reality. So you can actually change things within your experience. And um, change your reality as long as it is in line with the law of nature. So you can't say, okay, I want, um, you know, I want, you, can, you can't just ask for anything. It has to be a law of nature, meaning that um, you can't ask a, I, I want my cat to fly. You can't do that because it's law of nature. Nature is the cat, your cat cannot fly. So you can't ask for that. It's something that is not in line with law of nature. However, if it's something that is in line with the law of nature, then yes, you can change. For example, I want to change the energy of, you know, whatever it is that I'm drinking to support my body, which is law of nature. So you can actually activate your fourth eye and then just, you know, hold it, hold the cup with your um, fourth eye and say you want to enhance the energy of this cup and all the, the liquid within it to support my health. So you can do that. That is what the fourth eye allows you to do. And the stronger your um, energy, the more or the more profound changes you can bring about. And so the fourth eye is really connected to earth. So for example, things like, you know, water, liquid, food, those are all things that are connected with earth. So changing the, the, um, the energy within the liquid of this cup, totally within what the fourth eye can do. And then the fifth eye, the fifth eye allows you to change things that are connected to heaven or the, to the universe. Let's see, if you want to change weather, then use your fifth eye. And um, I've kind of tested this and, and I am pretty good at um, changing the weather or at the very least, let's see. Um, I think I've told you guys the, the, the the story that when we were going back from a attending a workshop from um, Sifu James and we just learned about it. So it was just raining very hard. And so um, we, so we decided to play with, you know, using our, my, my fifth eye to shift so that the rain is going to be um, less crazy. So, so that we can drive more safely. And I did that, and it actually started to um, taper down the, to much lighter. So it did do that. Now, did it did it happen? Because I, you know, called up my fifth eye to, to work it. 
or just because, you know, at that time, the rain is tapering off anyways. So which way is it? Is it just coincidence? I don't know. However, that one time when I um, experimented with my fifth eye changing the, the weather, changing the rain, it, it was pretty good. So now the sixth and the seventh eye. Where is the sixth eye? The sixth eye is um, at the soles of your feet. So where there's an arch in your feet, that's where the sixth eye is. And the sixth eye, the function of the sixth eye is to stop. Stop energy. So stop earth energy. For example, if I want to, let's say, stop, um, let's see. Stop, stop, um, let me think of something. Let's say if I want to stop um, some weed in my garden from growing, then I can use my sixth eye, activate my sixth eye at the, the, the arch, arch at the sole of my feet and just, you know, stamp on it and command that, you know, those weeds that I don't want to to grow in my garden will stop. So that's what is the sixth eye is for is to stop earth energy. And the seventh eye is on the left side, same arch of the your your feet on the left side. And that is to stop universal energy. Let's say if you want to, to stop a um a typhoon or stop a tornado, then definitely use the, the seventh eye to do that. Okay, so there's the fourth eye, fifth eye, and then I'm not going to show you my feet, but we have the sixth eye and the seventh eye. So when we activate all of those eyes, um, that, by the way, there, there are actually corresponding place in, in the, the skull that corresponds to the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh eye, um, okay? But they are multiple, they're not just one specific, um, you know, place. They are multiple phase. So I'm not gonna show you all, all of that. Just know that um, you can, when you just imagine that you're breathing in energy from the palm of your right hand, which is the fourth eye, and then do that with the left arm. So you're breathing in energy from those and also from the two soles of your feet. So when you do that, you actually draw in more energy. And the more energy you draw in, the um, your soul knows that, oh, okay, you want to amp up the soul energy. So then that's what the, the, your, the soul energy would be more um, potent when you do that. So these are the ways that you can enhance your own soul energy. Any questions so far? Comments? Um. I want to make sure I got this. There's the fifth eye that you said you can change things in the universe. Then the seventh eye that you can stop things in the universe. What's the difference between what you do with your hand versus the foot? Okay, so the hands are for changing. Okay. So you are transforming. Whereas okay. the, the soles of your feet is to stop. So actually, yes. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so you can increase or decrease with hands, but to stop, you use the feet. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It um. So when you. So just think of the implication. The more you work with the soul energy, you get your energy up higher, the more things you can actually shift. 
So it's um it's actually a very cool tool to have to start to strengthen your soul energy. So that's look, that's kind of um all the the well the, there's more however I think I think that's just to to revisit all these if you remember all of these it's already very good okay so that's all I want to um share in terms of reviewing. So any um, questions, comments? This was really good review. I just wanted to say thank you. Okay, you're very welcome. Yeah. Remember we also did um, the deeds that soul energy activating guardians. The guardians, yeah. Guardians, yeah. They are more, um, yes, um, yeah. I know that there are there are there are other things. Uh, so I just want to um, kind of concentrate more because when I if I try to do the guardians, then we get distracted. <laughs> <laughs> We get distracted, so I'm not going to, to talk about the guardians. Okay. Um, okay, great. So I just want to mention a few more things. For so we we the next is really to do um, meditation, of course, so that we can activate all of that and do some clearing as well. Um, a few things to remember when you're doing this on your own is to run your own energy first. Is to so three three nine six 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 nine three. So those are just running the your meridians. So when your meridians um are running, then it's easier to um, do the soul energy. And also it is to do um, 39 inch activate as well, because 39 inch activate kind of um, gives you protection. Now, the thing about protection is at some point you really don't need protection. However, initially you may need some protection because when if your soul energy you don't know how potent your soul energy is. When your soul energy is potent and potent enough, then um, really nothing can get at you. Whereas um, initially, if you haven't done too much work, then you may want to have some protection because when you start to use your soul energy, it's like you you're sticking your energy out. And um, I would say that, that there may be um, some, I wouldn't say energy vampires, but it's it's like there are entities out there in, in, in and around our environment that are looking for um, help. And when they see that you are working with the soul energy and you raise your energy higher, then they want to come to you. They're, like, they're attracted to you. And so if your soul energy is not high enough, then you don't know, you don't really quite know how to help them. So then they may end up actually draining your energy instead of um, so that is not what you want. You want to actually build up your own energy. So that's why is to definitely run the energy, the 33966693 and also activate 39 inch. 39 inch is 
at each inch that is away from a physical body is a layer of energy and each of the layer um, has different function. 39 inch is a particular function is it creates kind of like um, a dome around you that can gives you this protection so that energies from outside cannot get at you. So that's what um, is useful when you're starting out is to remember to activate 39 inch. And what else? Um, the other thing is good to do is to actually um, synchronize your breath. So five in, five out. So five, when you breathe in, five count. Breathe out, five count. Why? Because that that actually um, it when you do that consistently for um, like maybe two three minutes, it actually puts your body back into um, really right at ease. Because most of the time we are running on you know, you know, fight or flight energy, we are stressed. But if you, when, whenever you do the synchronized breath of five in, five out, and you do it for consistently for two, three minutes, it just relaxes you. So it actually helps you to um, be able to focus your own soul energy, work with your own soul energy much better. So it's not mandatory. However, I do suggest that you do that. You can definitely work with so energy without doing it, but I suggest that you do that, okay? So <clears throat> those are the, the, the few things that I want to bring out. Any questions? Two questions. Um, so we do the breathing before we do so energy and do three, three, nine, six, 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 nine, three? Yeah. Okay. So we start with breath. Okay. Yeah, that was breath. And the other thing is, can we use 39 inch activate when we go out in public to protect our energy, or is, is there other things we need to do? When you are in, like, like when you are meditating, you you can um, get to 39 inch, but when you're out and about. You can't get to 39 inch. Okay. Because okay. you are busy doing things. Mm -hmm. You just don't have you just don't have the the, okay. the um consciousness to maintain this 39 inch. Like even okay. when you you create this when you're in the house, you do the 39 inch. Yes, it may be there, but once you're out and about, you 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 forget about it. And once you forget about it, then um, your energy will start to come back down. So, can you do it when you're out? Sure, you can. However, um, you have to really consciously work at it. You can't just you know just say it. <laughs> things. You can't just say it to other things. Mm. Okay. okay. All right, thank you. Whereas when we are doing meditation, 39 inch, not a problem. Right, okay. Like, or maybe before going to bed, uh, you can say 39 inch activate. Yeah, you can do that. Okay. To protect yourself from when you're sleeping, when you're dreaming, or who knows, you know, you're going to other dimensions, then... You protect yourself. It's a good idea, but is it going to hold the 29 inches when we sleep? Um, when you are um, dreaming, when you are going to other dimensions, it's your soul that's going. Your body is not doing anything. So your soul is, your soul is good. Got it. Thank you. 
Okay, yes, thank you. Okay. And let's see. No other questions? So in that case, I'm going to 